Hello and welcome to the She Lead Showcase. I am your hostess with the Moses, Katie Kinsey, Bay Bay. Bay Bay, all of the Katie Kinsey. Katie Kinsey, shout out, shout out. Oh my god. Uh, join with me, of course. <laughs> my love, oh wait, I gotta do this hand now. I mirrored, oh, I mirrored yeah. my camera, so now I'm also talking about what. You pointed to, you, you pointed to nobody. You pointed to nobody. My lovely ghost. <laughs> but it's weird because on my screen... Your, yeah, on the oh actual god. call, it's away from me. Oh god, my lovely co-host. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She is. Just do it towards Adam. Adam? I yeah. Can see, like, I can finally see Adam Cole a little bit now. Uh, yeah, and like use Adam as a guy, like towards Adam is how you do it. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I'm still gonna forget, it doesn't even matter. Okay. The Young Bucks Nation sensation. <laughs> the fire breathing Cody Rhodes Eaton. The spice of life, the sassiest senior Rita that I know. <sighs> just, just look at her, guys. She's so cute. I love. Her. She's <laughs> great. <laughs> She's great. I'm of course talking <laughs> about <laughs> Miss Y2 Garcia Savannah. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. It's a little weird. It does not feel like a Thursday, so I almost forgot we were filming. <laughs> does not. Uh oh yeah. Matt likes to call me Katie Vick during the month of October. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's been almost a year since I was on Smackin' Raw for the first time, ironically enough. And that makes sense because I most re- I'm on the most recent episode of Smackin' It Raw, as well as the most recent episode of Young Kings Wrestling, which you can check out. And also, when you go over there, check out these Black Lives Matter uh merch this is the breast cancer awareness one if you're watching the video obviously it's it's black and pink like you can't go wrong it's so soft go cop one you know what they do yeah uh good causes and tc gives it to people who need it so shout out to them and you know while you're watching the video subscribe crazy i know what a concept please (laughs) If you go to my Pretty Twitter, please. oh god, see, fuck, my Twitter, Katie Rath thirteen, <laughs> uh, Linktree will take you to the, what, uh, my Twitter of course, the YouTube, subscribe, Twitch, <laughs> Twitch.tv slash, Sheleach Showcase. It's very hard to say fast. I have to slow down saying it now because I keep messing up. We stream every Thursday at nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it'll also take you to. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts. I still haven't figured out Apple Podcasts. It's it, at this point, it's not gonna happen. So just listen to it somewhere else. <laughs> There's many other places. It does not have to be Apple. Exactly, and also um, Instagram. I just made. So yes, she Instagram. made an Insta. She did showcase. Oh yeah, Please. It, it is a crew neck. I was very happy that it was a crew neck. Um. Because it's hoodie season. Damn it. <laughs> I, I got happy when I explained it to Matt <laughs> on the most upset of podcasts. Fine. Whatever. I like crew necks. I like long sleeves. It's not tank top season anymore, guys. Well, eh. Depends on, depends on where you live. Yeah, for me, tank top season can last up to, like, maybe November. <laughs> True. Like, it was... Mm-hmm. I walked out of work and almost sweat to death. It was, like, 80 degrees. I said, what is this? The fuck is this? It... Yeah, well, we've actually gotten a lot of rain in the summer, so I'm hoping because of that we actually get reasonably cold weather as the year comes to an end. But I there's times where it's just still fucking warm in December. I remember one time on Christmas, um, it was so warm that I wore like a thin shirt that was like maybe barely like past my elbows, and I didn't need a jacket at all. Like I went without a jacket, and I was totally fine. Damn. And then, like, I remember that same year, my grandma's birthday happened, and it snowed, and then the next day, sunny skies, so. Yo, weather is a bitch. Crazy. Doesn't make any yeah. sense. Um, but so, how, uh, how was your week? How, how are you, how are you feeling? Um, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. My week's been kind of wild. I've kind of talked to you about it, but that's as far as I'll go. It was uh, just been yeah. a crazy, it's been a crazy 36 hours, last 36 hours. Um, I just came back actually from Arizona on Monday. I just went to go visit some family, and we had a pretty fun time, and I really liked it. Good, 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 good. 
Uh, I've been getting headaches <laughs> every day. <laughs> That's a mood. That's a damn mood. Uh, because I think I might have talked about this on Smack Girl too. Uh, throwback. <laughs> um, so every year I have to get new glasses. And once I hit mm. kind of like towards the year mark, I start getting headaches again, even if my prescription changes ever so slightly. So I'm going to the eye doctor on Wednesday. I'm going to have new glasses by the end of the month. I think I might stick with like the... Your frames? Not like these frames, but like something along these lines. I feel like I look oh. more professional with these glasses on, even though there's a like fucking glare though. from my ring light. <laughs> but, oh, see, I got to turn my head. See, I like this. I like this part, you know? Yeah, understandable. So, I and I get two pairs, because, huh, coupons, two for 59 <laughs> Two pairs of glasses for $59, you can't beat that. that. Uh, that's not bad at all. Maybe I don't know how things are priced differently in other states, or like if it's an insurance thing, or even your prescription just isn't nearly as bad. But like my younger sister, her vision is so fucked up. I think like when like a couple times her glasses were like three hundred dollars, just for, just for the prescription alone. But the poor thing needs to, she needs to see. So like, what are you gonna do? Not get them for her? It's crazy. Like Eyesight? her vision. I didn't choose to be blind. Yeah, I know. Her vision, I like, I know this about my sister, not, like, about this, but I'll just say really quick that her vision is so bad. She's going to be 18 this year. Her vision is so bad that they cannot fully correct her left eye with laser eye surgery. It's that bad, and it's only getting worse. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't help but feel bad for her. See, that's a fear. So I'm half blind in my right eye. Yeah. And so when I get my prescription, I just have prescription and a little eyes mark. One eye. Um, I don't even know if you could hear that, but... <laughs> no, I did hear it. <laughs> uh, so I only have it in this eye, then this one's just fine. So it, this is my right eye that changes. It's getting better. Um, there was a point where, it's like, every time I went, it was going lower and lower, and I was like, oh my god, fuck. So I had a nice little panic attack. But this this isn't about glasses. This isn't about eyesight. <laughs> this is about wrestling. Yeah, that's <laughs> All right. Let's get into the news and rumors. Uh, before yes. I start, do you have any? Off the top of your head. Um, yes. <laughs> um, news. Um, next week for the first time and hopefully only time. Actually, we might have to do this later this year. Um, Katie is flying solo. I'm going to be out of town next week. I forgot that was next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Arlington and I will not here unless katie wants shitty quality audio and video no, <laughs> then, no, you get a, you get, a, you yeah. get the week off you or week sh off. shitty background because there won't be any bucks sh bucks stuff or figures next to me there won't be any of that i'll probably be on some couch in the living room <laughs> with a bad lighting so yeah gonna no, i'm gonna to be remind me i'm gonna forget so well, actually we well i guess we'll have to work around like thanksgiving also oh yeah that We'll do um, we'll do one like earlier in the week for Thanksgiving, so we don't. It have to might have to be, that. it might have to be Tuesday because um, because I might leave Wednesday. But yeah, so we, we, yeah, we can we can I'm, cross that bridge when we get to it. But yeah, but I'm taking next week off um because again I'm going to Arlington, taking a like a two hour flight. Is it a two hour flight? I so know. yeah. So yeah. yeah, next week uh I'm more than likely is, uh, flying solo. If not. I'm gonna ask one of the guys to hop on the Sheely Showcase. We'll Ooh, see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Ah. Let me know who's gonna try and replace me. Try and replace the spice of life. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> the young Bucks Nation sensation. You gotta be just like me, though. You gotta be, you know, elite loving and Cody Rhodes hating. I mean, I feel like we all hate Cody Rhodes. So I feel like that's easy. Okay. Do you loving the elite though? Being an elite mark, that's all, probably a little bit harder for some. That's a lot harder for some people, but I, we all On agree you. that Cody Rhodes is garbage. So yeah, and you got to be a Jericho. <sighs> you are a Jericho. Tanahashi loving. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So next week, that's my news. So. Okay. Yay. Well, so, not yay, but uh, there you go. All right. So the news and rumors for the rest of the wrestling world yes. uh this past weekend there was the knockout knockdown for impact it was the all women's pay-per-view uh in support of daphne of course mm -hmm. <laughs> matt wants the chance matt will talk <laughs> um so yeah it was in honor of daphne they had a nice 10 bell salute and stuff in the beginning 
Um, Mercedes Martinez won the tournament for that, so now she's going to keep an eye on the match that's having a Bound for Glory with Deanna Perrazzo and Mickey James. The Inspiration with Two Eyes, a.k.a. The Iconics, a.k.a. Cassie and Jessica? Jessie? I don't know if she goes by Jessica or Jessie. Jessica, Jessica McKay and Cassie Lee. Yes. Uh, they are going to be at Bound for Glory, and they are also challenging for the knockout tag titles, apparently. I found that out yesterday. Yeah. I will give Impact this as much as I don't watch them, because I don't feel like it. Nope. But don't waste my time on that shit. They are doing the women's tag team titles a lot more justice than WWE ever has. Really? Like, One of the truest things think, I've ever heard. And I think... And I think Inspiration will definitely keep that ball rolling with that. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. Because I assume they're going to (laughs) win. I would assume so. And if so, then that's awesome. Because, like, Impact actually has, like, a good women's tag division. (laughs) WWE doesn't fucking know what that means, but... They got a good women's division in general. I'm going to talk about the women. Oh, I know why. I know why. I've... I've, I've ranted twice about it already. It, I'll make it yeah, a third. Let's, okay, let's keep going. I already know exactly what <laughs> um, We saw Stephanie McMahon get uh, inducted as the first female into the International Sports Hall of Fame. So that's pretty cool. Shout out to Stephanie. I know. Shout out to Steph. Um, obviously, you're watching this on a Thursday or a Friday. Well, if you're not live, then you're watching this on a Friday, hopefully. Dynamite will be on Saturday the next two weeks kenny's birthday kenneth oh the next two weeks i'm pretty sure i saw on oh. their tweet it was the next two weeks uh, well, if, if, if it's know. not the next two weeks then it's for sure next this like this upcoming week well yeah i know it is this come upcoming week because it's kenny's birthday Yay. Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth, kenneth's birthday. birthday he's turning 38 i think that's he's only 38 that's crazy um what else Carmelo Hayes used his, basically his, like, money in the bank cash-in thing he won from the... Oh yeah, I was good. I had to go back and watch that because I was, like, I just looked up, like, the results because I was, like, I'm too busy to watch right now. Um, so I just, I looked up the results and I was, like, wait, what? So I'm, like, so Scott, Isaiah Swerve, Scott won, but then he won. So I'm, like, who's, who's the winner here? Like, yeah, who's the so, champ- like, um... Legado's Santos Escobar, of course, took on Swerve yeah. Scott. Match was great. Swerve won, which kind of surprised people because Swerve and Hit Row are going to SmackDown. But then it makes sense because Carmelo and Trick came out for the save to help Swerve retain. Carmelo used his. It, it, it kind of, yeah, it's like kind of like the money in the bank. He got a championship opportunity whenever he wanted. And he decided to cash in then. So Carmelo Hayes is the new North American champion. I'm very happy. I fucking love Carmelo Hayes. Yeah. Again, I was just confused. I wasn't mad about it. I was like, wait, so I'm like, what's happening? Yeah, if you kind of just, like, glance at it quick, you're just like, the fuck? What? Yeah, you're like, wait, so Scott won, and then now Carmelo won? You're like... It was a damn good match. Both yeah, I, it was. I'm glad I did go back and watch it, but I, I was really confused when I first read it. I was like, "What in the hell? What in the hell?" Also, Matt is really campaigning to become you next week. I'll need to see a resume. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, if Matt's up to it, sure. It'll be it'll be it'll be a, it'll be a flip flop of uh Smackdown, so I don't know if he'll be okay with that. It's okay. Um. I was gotta, if you want to wear a wig, you gotta find in one like. You gotta have a long. Thirty six inches one. long. I think it's like thirty six inches. That's wild. Um, another thing that has happened recently. Before I speak on the Queen's Crown tournament. Oof. <laughs> Tessa Blanchard. Oh. There are more bullying. There are allegations. But more bullying allegations whilst she is in WoW. First of all, no one's surprised. Second of all, I pretends to be shocked. Like, w- once a racist bullying what? piece of shit, always a racist bullying piece of shit. 
Especially when she's not held accountable. Like, yeah, she got... Didn't she get released from Impact because of that? That's basically the reason, yeah. And then she stopped showing up. But yeah, but, like, now she's with WoW, and then they're, like, exploiting that, like, by making a shirt and shit. Oh, my God, that shirt. They're just feeding into it, and it's... Yeah, she's making money because of it. The whole situation's ridiculous. I hate it. Tessa Blanchard is a piece of actual garbage. I don't want her to have success in anything she does. Like, if you're racist and you're a bully, you can go straight to hell. I mean, we're all going, but you have, like, a nice seat in hell. In the pits. You stupid special bitch. special reserved seat. And since I'm already mad, this Queen's Crown tournament, right? Oh, boy. So. I'm like, if I wasn't sitting, let me sit down for this. <laughs> so listen. You've had four matches so far, right? The first round. Yeah, people were talking about, like, the time, the amount of time all the matches oh. were combined, like, combined, the, the amount of time. I know. So, four matches, right? Yes. Excuse me. Combined, ten minutes or less. Four matches. Alright? Shayna Baszler's <sighs> makes sense, because yes. if you want her to win, it's you have her squash plain and simple. You have her run through, like she did the Elimination well, Chamber yeah. back in the day. Like, two years ago? A year ago? Yeah, I've been, they're, I think they're trying to hopefully hopefully that's, that's the, build her up to be the dominant, like, the badass she once okay was. It, but what's the excuse for the other three? There isn't one. Thank you. So, like, it's, <laughs> and it's the fact that you have Natalia in the tournament, for why. She's well, not pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Arian has something to say about that. It's... Well, yeah, nobody likes Natalia either. Like, that's that's a given. Um, and the fact that you have Zelina and Carmella facing each other, which, why? We don't... They, not, one of them shouldn't have won. It, it's, it's a mess, and it's supposed to be historic, and it's supposed to be groundbreaking, and we finally got what we wanted, the Queen's Crown Tournament, and you're doing fucking nothing with it. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, Xavier Woods is more than likely not going to win. Because they yeah. hate us. Because they hate us. They don't They don't want to give us what we want. They only give Batista what he wants. Which is bullshit, because fuck Batista. Well, I mean... Batista? Batista, yeah. I no, Batista. But yeah, he Batista works too. Yeah. There's, there's many variations of his name. But yeah. Just, I just want there to be good use of women in wrestling and for women and just people in general to not be racist and bullies. I feel like I'm not asking for a lot here. I know, right? I've given up on humanity. Especially in the wrestling community. Because people got butt her about shoes on Twitter. That's a thing now. People were mad that the Bucks tweeted stuff about shoes and then Top Dollar tweeted stuff about shoes and then people were attacking Top Dollar. And I don't know. Also, what is that music in the background? I have no idea. It's probably the people who You're like to a party? make all Go. Probably. Tell them to come these, on the fucks never, these fucks never shut up. They're, they're either they're stupid ass dogs that they probably abuse. It's probably they're throwing parties. They're either screaming at each other. These fucks never shut up. Not the bucks. I'm talking. I'm trying to point to my window right there where they're going. <laughs> these fucks. These. Uh, uh, slip of the tongue. These bucks. <laughs> I know. Not the bucks. The piece of fucks who live across the street. Yeah. So that music just threw me off. Uh, yeah, so I feel like I'm not asking for a lot here, you know? Is it too much to ask for proper treatment of your women in 2021? Apparently. Apparently, if, you're in a, Apparently. if your acronym is WWE. If you... What, you want proper treatment of your women because it's supposed to be the women's evolution? <laughs> yeah, as if! Um, I feel like that's all I had. Maybe one of those. That's all I had written down. Hmm. But oh well. Um, I saw on an Instagram page, like a news page. Okay. I was about to say that I had no idea. Like I don't know. I didn't know about the buck shit, but we'll just get on, move on from that. <clears throat> um, that um, 
apparently Tony Khan accidentally, I don't know how accidentally it was, but apparently um, the full, the gear, the card for full gear has been leaked. So I don't know if I should read the card. Should I read the, the alleged card or um, the well, I mean, some of them, I mean, a lot of them make sense. Like MJF yeah. and Darby. Kenny sense. and Hangman. Kenny and Hangman, which we kind of already knew was happening. Uh, there was um, one more you said that I was just like, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, like Inner Circle and American Top Team. Inner Cir- yeah, them. Which Inner Circle better fucking win. Like, it would be an insult to wrestling if they did win. Yeah, so, I mean... It, I'm just wondering where the hell Santana and Ortiz are, like... Honestly? Like, where are them, they? Put like, them in the tag tournament. There's not a tag tournament, but, like, put them in, the, put them for the titles. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get you, but, like, it's like, why haven't they been in the tag title picture yet? I don't know. I think Santana and Ortiz can absolutely kill it with the Lucha Bros. Oh, Santana and Ortiz versus Lucha Bros? Fucking sign me up. Please and thank Please you. Please and thank you. Anyway. Actually, well, has I don't think has Orange Cassidy had his match with Matt Hardy? Because I know they're like in a few. I know like the most he's had was like a hair versus hair match with like that other guy from Jack his Evans. from yeah that guy. Um, but like he's never faced Matt Hardy. That seems like a match that would or should happen hit full gear. As opposed to one of the alleged matches that was on the card, which was like CM Punk versus Wardlow. I'm like, I get it. You want Punk on the card, but that is very random. It's very fucking random. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe now that it got leaked, uh, Tony Khan will change I hope, some things. And I hope that change isn't um, Hangman versus Kenny, only because I know there's rumors that they're going to make it a triple threat with Danielson. I'm like, please fucking don't. I don't know if that's necessarily a rumor or just the meme at this point. Well, Dude. yeah, no, I know, but like, I know it was a rumor also, and I'm like, look... Uh-huh. I don't have anything against Danielson, but look, dude just got here. He can fucking wait, okay? He can go take care of his kids for a little bit. He can, like, kind of stay on here and there. But, like, he doesn't need the title right now. I mean, he already had a match with Kenny. They went to a draw. It's fine. They can go another time. Hangman has been waiting almost three years for the championship. Shout out to Hangman. He needs it. All right. Anything else? That's it. <laughs> I was like, that's it. Okay. Uh, today in, oh god, I must drop my phone. Oh. <laughs> Women's <laughs> wrestling history. I should, I should get like graphics that pop up as I say it, but that's too much work in OBS, and I don't feel like it, so I don't want to. But it was an idea. In my Maybe head. in the future. Maybe in the future if I feel up to it and my computer doesn't lag, you know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, speaking of Impact using their women properly, TNA. Uh, Bound for Glory, 2007. Uh, Gail Kim becomes the new Knockouts champion in a gauntlet match, which features uh, Angel Williams, Awesome Kong, Christy Hemi, Jackie Moore, Miss Brooks, ODB, Roxy Laveau, uh, Shelly Martinez, and Talia Madsen. Madison. Now, let me explain who these people are if you do not know. Angel Williams is also known as Angelina Love. She is a three times, uh, yeah, three times knockout champion. Uh, awesome Kong is awesome fucking Kong. Yeah, I'm like, uh, she's you know. uh, actually this was also part of my news and rumors, but I wrote it down here. She's going to be in the Impact Hall of Fame. Oh, nice, good for her. Rightfully so. Uh, Chrissy Hemi, if you watched WWE, you know who Chrissy Hemi is. Yeah. Uh, Jackie Moore is also known as Jacqueline, a two-time women's champ. Or WWE, WWF, if you will. Uh, Miss Brooks, I couldn't really find information on. Uh, ODB is a two-time knockout women's champ. Uh, Roxy Lavoa also couldn't really find anything on. Shelly Martinez, she was Ariel in uh, ECW in like 2008, 2009. And uh, Talia Madison is also known as Velvet Sky, who is a former knockout champion. So that match was stacked. Like And she won. That's I mean, that's crazy. Well, Gail Kim won. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And she like went through all these like 
all these like you know you, like the, with the likes of awesome kong and you know like jacqueline yeah jacqueline Love, velvet sky like these are names that like when you hear impact you hear knockouts you think of them now yeah and she rose to the top from this gauntlet deservedly so and she won the championship honestly gail kim deserves so much more respect she got treated like garbage in wwe basically left and then has been killing it ever since like she has made her name more so in impact tna whatever you want to call it than in wwe yeah for sure they gave her a chance wwe doesn't know what that means so wow weird you know, right? unless unless you're the four horsewoman miss brooks is tracy brooks yes i did know that see this website i use uh to look up uh today in women's wrestling history it if you click on the name of person it shows you like other names they're known by so sometimes it, like i'll see a name like i was like oh talia madison it's an odd name so i click on it and it shows me names they're also known as in every match they've had in every company damn it's the i wish i knew the website off the top of my head i don't you just but have it saved knockouts commissioner playboy playmate oh now he's just reading me thank you matt shout out to matt for always being here when he could be watching the luna Vachon dark side of the rain which i need to yeah. fucking watch i might do that oh Saturday. sure Oh, I might be filming Saturday too. Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I still need to watch the. I still need to watch the Chris Canyon one. So do I. I need to watch the Chris Canyon one. I don't really need to watch like the other ones, but that one I want to watch, and then the Luna Vachon one I really want to watch because she was cool. Yeah, and that was. I didn't know funny. much. I didn't know much about Chris Canyon, but then. I didn't know about him by the time the episode was ta- being talked about and like when it aired because um, you wouldn't know because you didn't read it but the Young Bucks book the Bucks talk about it okay. in their book Matt was more Matt specifically it was in one of Matt's chapters where he talks about it and I remember like that part of the book actually made me cry a little yeah. it just it was a very sad story and you know he briefly well, touched on it so I can't I, imagine like I def- know part of that story because he talks about it on the episode mm-hmm. oh that's frankie kazarian's wife oh that makes sense okay <laughs> we got there uh, tracy brooks uh mrs kazarian if you will fuck <laughs> i also like that he just so, ran everything down i'm like mrs elite hunter is what you're saying <laughs> he's the worst hunter in all, in all, all you know, where has he been honestly I know probably Impact but I mean like in AEW where the hell has he been I don't know. um BTE Savannah what happened yes that impacted well I can't even say so Dynamite from last week I guess <laughs> or yeah, yeah. Dynamite last um so they did talk about Dynamite um last week so I was able, I was able to like, I knew like, okay, I could still, I could still talk about it like for today, yep. even though there wasn't anything like, you know, dynamite this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they went over, you know, like how I said, they do like their little damage control for like any botch or any mistake that may happen on dynamite or like in other events. Like I know with Matt Seidel, when he had his poor guy, when he had his botch, they said, oh, it was Michael Nakazawa, he put baby oil on the turnbuckle, and that's why he slipped. That damage control, they did that in the beginning, but it was the damage control for that power bomb fail that they tried on, um, yeah, like, they all tried, and they, Kenny just fell on his ass, and we didn't know what happened, so they, um, so they ended up explaining why, um, they didn't really explain well, yeah, actually they did, because, like, they had Nakazawa, they tried to do, they tried it out on Nakazawa, but they couldn't lift him, he was too heavy, and they ended up all hurting their backs because of it, so that was their little explanation as to why they couldn't do it to Luchasaurus. And then another thing that happened was, um, they, Hangman got a letter from AEW basically saying that he's out of paid time off 
And Hangman's like, well, I couldn't care less. But then he read that he was going to, if he kept, like, taking time off, it was going to go without pay. So he was like, well, shit. Yep. And then they, they, in the same envelope, had the Joker card. Except the Joker card, of course, had a fucking horse on it because it's Hangman. Cowboy. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of, like, explains, you know, oh, look, this is what happened to Hangman before. He was just a lazy, a lazy ass in bed when really he was taking care of his infant son. Which, also, we got a cute little little um little i guess um cameo from his wife amanda because she was the one filming him and she's like oh you have mail and she she was the one she who threw the envelope at him me. yeah she threw the envelope at him so i'm like oh my i was like i don't know why that made me so happy i was like we got an amanda cameo even though it was just her voice but she she's threw a been letter on bt before no i know but like we got a little cameo like when was the last time she was on wow, bt yeah. and the only the only time i can remember is when hangman was staying home because of um, the pandemic, and um, he was like, you know, trying to cat, like, you know, find things to do around the house. Yeah. And so one of the things he was doing was like hitting pillows and like, doing wrestling moves on pillows. And his wife Amanda threw one of the pillows so he can like, yeah, I remember do the that, yeah. lariat on. So yeah, she threw it. So that's the last time I remember um, Amanda being on BT. But we got a little cameo, and it made me so happy because I was like, Amanda, shout out. But, yeah, yeah, shout out to Amanda. So there was that, and there was this um, other part that I wasn't going to touch on, but then it seems to be a rec- going to be a recurring segment, and that's Silver and Reynolds um, talking about, or talking to Adam Cole. <laughs> they first wanted Adam to change his hair, but then they apologized, and now they want him to change his name, because he's like, there's already an Adam here, you know, and all, yeah. oh, and there's already a Cole, you know, like, what are you, Michael Cole's son or something? And they were like basically trying to get him to change his name but of course like last week he said he told him to eat shit yep. and they were but here's the thing they keep so yeah they try to get him to change his hair and now they try to get him to change his name but the thing that they both that they talked about both last week and this week which and if it happens next week then it's obviously going to be a pattern they keep talking about how his friends the elite are like shitty friends they keep trying to tell him like yo your friends suck they your friends murder you yeah, exactly. Your friends are the worst. You need to, like, get away from them. I wonder if that's going to maybe at some point, especially if Hangman does reunite with the Dark Order, if that will somehow maybe give him a state of mind, like a different state of mind on the Elite. Maybe. But who knows? Who knows? Oh, that's and then um, the last thing is just the Dark Order. They were all happy back together, you know, per usual. But then they're like, oh, did you know that Hangman's back? And they're like, oh, is he now? And then that's, like, the last we heard from them, like, from the Dark Order. So I'm thinking maybe they are going to reunite with Hangman. They're going to probably go find him, and maybe we'll see what happens there. I guess we will see what happens there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Dark Elevation. These were actually Dark Elevation and Dark Short cards this week. Wow. I know. So, Elevation. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. That's still way too much for a fucking hour, but. Uh, uh, uh. uh so, the Hardy family office <sighs> defeated Wheeler Yuta, Chuck Taylor, Lee Johnson, and uh, Glock Anderson's son Brock. Uh, Ruby Soho, who made her Dark Elevation debut, uh, defeated Emmy Sakura. Uh, FTR defeated Lee Moriarty and LSG. Santana Ortiz defeated Adrian Soriano and Matthew Omen. Joey Janela beat Crowbar and Blue Meanie came out. It was weird. I don't know. Uh, Tay Conti defeated Danny Moe and Penelope Ford defeated Notorious Mimi. Now Dark, on the other hand, Four matches. Really? I know. Can you believe Why does the two hour show get four matches and the one hour show get seven? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> the big side. Yeah, because I do have, I do have a question, but I'll ask after you talk about dark. But it does have to do with dark. <laughs> okay. Uh Captain Sean Dean defeated Angie Lockhart. Wardlow defeated Darian Thangston. Evil Uno defeated Anthony Green, who used to be somebody in NXT and I can't remember the name. 
<laughs> and uh, Killian King, Kylon King, I still don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's fucking cool. She beat uh, Ashley. Uh, fuck, I never know how to pronounce her name either. Well, Ashley something. Because fuck, pro- fuck pronunciation. Because I don't know how to speak. Uh, See, so yeah, that was it. Wow. I feel like um like this is usually the beginning and I go to sit back like okay this is yeah I know you're just like you're just like ah the eighteen matches here we but but I guess we get we get more room we have enough time so I can ask my question yeah what's up so what was this whole thing I probably should have asked during news and rumors but there was like this whole thing about dark that they were talking about I saw Kenny tweet about it and he was like oh some of my matches were on or something like that so they decided to do a uh, best of dark. (laughs) on they put it on youtube i guess so it was just like a compilation of some of the best matches that have been on dark i guess oh okay so i didn't really miss anything. no so i mean because granted in the beginning dark had the box and kenny and cassidy because that's like, well because that's names. that's how they got people to watch exactly because i would watch every i watched the first like seven eight episodes religiously i, just, so I was like this is okay an hour easy and like they're good matches too but then i just gave up because too much wrestling yeah, I was like, I just couldn't. At the time, Tuesdays were not a good day for me, so I just couldn't watch. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to know what that was about, because I yeah. saw a t- I f- tweet about I it. I forgot to mention that. So <laughs> oh, and I, f- I was going to say this during news and rumors, but it's not really news, but I was going to say how Hangman tweeted that he was at the building on Wednesday, and he's like, you know, where is everyone at? Oh. You know, I was like, do you want me to work or not? And I was like, oh, who's going to tell him? <laughs> who's going to tell him? Oh, Hangman. What bless his heart. Bless I'm his, bless so glad he's hand. back. Last time, he, yes, I know this, but it's because it was like in a, like the day. Last time he tweeted was Labor Day, and I know that because I was in Mexico, and I was so sad that he was like, you know, I was missing him, you know? <laughs> um, Wrestlers of the Week. Did you go first last week, or did I go first? I did. Remember, I remember we talked about it, and I went first. Okay. So you go first yeah. now. I'm glad you're here, because I never remember. Um... Oh, where do I want to start? I'll just start with tag team because this is the one I thought of last and I can just get it over with. Okay. There wasn't a lot of tag team wrestling happening. No, there was not. Especially with no dynamite. Tag team central. Exactly. When when the 400, the company with the 400 tag teams doesn't have a show before we do our show, makes things like a little the, difficult. With the 400 tag teams that has the 400 tag matches. Exactly. Because... <laughs> Because, like, there, I, I will never forget gra- the Grand Slam show in New York on Dynamite. Like, I want to say, like, 80% of the matches were tag team matches. It doesn't matter if it was five, if four, two, just regular two on two. I was like, man, there's a lot of tag matches here. Uh, did we coordinate the black shirts? No, we did not. Actually, yours My also kind of are... has pink on it, too. Yeah, it's kind of like a pink. It's like a faded pink, Purpley, yeah. pinky purple. Well, I'm wearing Got a little mine. yellow right there. Uh, breast cancer awareness, Black Lives Matter, because I fucking love this shirt. Like, this is actually... My- I'm wearing this on <laughs> Sunday, wearing... too, when I go up to my school. And I'm wearing this Kenny shirt just because. I love Kenny. Just because. What else Kenny. is new? Um, but, back to the tag teams. Yes. I gotta go, I guess, with just Biggie and Drew. <sighs> I mean... I, I mean, I thought they did good there as a tag team. a lot of options to choose from so yeah, there wasn't i just went with them because they did the whole like mega powers thing in the back with them like i thought they were i thought, were, I thought they were cool as a tag team it was cool uh i like them both i mean i like Biggie more because jerry's had his time oh yeah i also forgot to mention crown jewel is on thursday at like noon yeah, I don't want to say it's always like in 10 a.m. Oh, time. so what? Oh, you're not going to be able to try next week. No. I was going to say, oh, we'll talk about it. Actually, I think I got Matt to do it with me, so it just won't be at thir- It won't be at 9. So it's going to be a late one if we do it live. If not, fuck it. I will. But <laughs> I'll, still, I'll still talk about that. Uh, so yeah, Biggie and Drew, because no other tag teams. Savannah? Yeah, so I'm just going to say right now, my pretty much all three of my picks are pretty different than what I, you know, I usually kind of stick to, like, a certain group. Or, like, like, I don't really, like, expand. 
But yeah. this week was pretty different. I was like, I was even surprised at myself. I was like, wow. And this one I think is the most surprising. I went with the acclaimed. And I'm not joking. Cause yeah, they didn't look, I don't think they deserved that tag team title opportunity, but that match was honestly really good. And they do show promise. Will they be future tag team champions? Yes, just not in the next few years. Maybe, like, unless they bring other tag titles, maybe. But, like, they did really good, especially against the likes of the Lucha Bros, who, you know, you just saw their match at All Out with the Bucks, you know, one of the other best tag teams. And they were able not only to keep up with them, but they were able to put on a really good match with them. And another reason is because the fact that especially more Max Caster, he was able to rebound from the whole situation that happened earlier in the year. And I know when people want to cancel someone, they go fucking nuclear and don't ever want, they want, they want the worst for them. They wanted him to lose his job. They wanted him to lose everything. And I was like, look, I didn't agree with his comments, but like, I think that's a little too extreme. And the fact that he was able to rebound and even like go through with this tag team title match, which was I thought was good, especially for it being on Rampage, you know, the one hour show where you got to rush shit. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty good. So I was like, you know what, especially with no tag teams, I thought, you know what, let me, I'll give them a chance. I, I went with the Acclaimed for this week. The only good thing about the Acclaimed is the one line Max Kasser had about Arn Anderson being strapped. <laughs> that I made me laugh. I, um, the only other line other than that one that I liked about from Max Caster when he does his little raps is when he to basically told Christian that he's nothing without an edge. And I was like, oh, Christian. He was, Christian did not look happy. I was like, that was good. Nah, I, I'll give him that one. Yeah, so, yeah. It, I don't think they deserve to be in the number one spot. Again, the ranking system is shit the in AEW. Is, get rid of the but, ranking system, AEW, it, for the, the love of God. That it, it happened and it was a good match, so that's fine. Whatever. And because they lost, they're probably going down the ranking, so we probably might not see them there for a while. <laughs> it doesn't even it matter. The, it only the matters when it's hangman. their ranking system is garbage. It, it only matters when it's hangman, and it only matters when it's Brit, because <laughs> poor Brit was struggling in that r ranking system for like the longest time, and then with hangman, oh. I'm, won't even get into that. It's it's a mess. Plain and simple. Yeah. Um hmm. Do I wanna do the man? Women's or men's. We'll do woman's. Woman's. Bianca Belair. More so because that KOD on Becky on to Sasha through a table. Chef's kiss. <laughs> and the fact that she held her own in that clusterfuck of a tag match on Monday. Yeah, she was probably the best part of that. I mean, the back and forth match. between her and Sasha, like, before the match started, like, trying to get the other into the corner. Yeah, like, trying I, that, to, yeah. That made me laugh. But, like, but Bianca's Sasha. a goddamn star. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm excited uh, to see the match. Well, actually, I'm not excited to see, I'm at fucking, oh, I'm gonna have to watch it after. I have to work. Thursday. Oh yeah, um, I'll let you know how it goes. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm gonna get friggin' spoiled. So I'm not even. I'm not even watch it. I might just go through Twitter. Well, you may not want to watch it. it. Honestly, yeah, fuck it. I might not watch it. But like, I can just go to Twitter. I have multiple group chats I can use, utilize to give me answers. Um. So yeah, Bianca Belair. That's my woman of the. Oh, yeah, I only have one of each this week. It's kind of weird. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um. Is your so my. Well, man, it was a little bit hard to choose also because, you know, um, we didn't see much from the women in AEW, which is where I usually pick because I know they treat their women a lot better. And so, therefore, there's better product coming from them. Mm -hmm. Not WWE women's wrestlers fault, but I'm just saying. But I did end up going with Shayna Baszler, and here's why. Yeah, her match was short, but that's exactly what I expected. Mm -hmm. No offense to Dana Brooke, but that's exactly what I expected going up against Shayna Baszler. I expected a quick match. She, Shayna Baszler has no business having, like, a lengthy match with someone like Dana Brooke. If it was, like, you know, 
like even Carmela, you know, Carmela, or even you know, like Tony Storm, or even Selena Vega, I could see, but like no, like Car- Dana Brooke, no, not really. But that's another and thing. I hope you. I brought up why Natalia but- is in the tournament. Why the fuck is Dana Brooke in the tournament? There are other women you could have utilized. It it just makes me mad all over again. Continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um. So yeah, Shayna Baszler, because um, I'm hoping that this will slowly, especially with Nia on the injured list, you know, she's on the shelf right now. Mm -hmm. So Shayna is back to being a singles wrestler like she should have been for the longest time. And hopefully that means they're hopefully, I say hopefully, goddamn. But hopefully that means they will get their, get her back to being that dominant, almost pretty much unstoppable you know, champion and badass and, you know, the one that she, the same Shayna Baszler that came from NXT, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, I saw some hope there. So I'm... Um, yeah, and, that's like, why I, and she, like I said before, it makes sense that her match was the quickest because we want her to run through the fucking tournament if you're going to have her do this. Just have her run through. Again, yeah. the whole tournament pays me off! It, it, like, how, again, how do you have, like, almost... 10 minutes total for four like, matches. Yeah, total for four matches. Over and then five it, hours of programming. And then I know they were saying that, like, the men's have, like, had, like, the men's. The men have had, like, 37 minutes or something. Like, almost 40 minutes of, like, of time, you know, in their matches. Like, combined time. Yeah. So, like, at least, like, not even half of it. It's, like, even less than half, you know? It's it's absurd, honestly, and it pisses. I'm hoping. I'm just hoping as they get closer to the finals, the matches will get better. Mm. But, you know, well, Zelina versus Carmella. Mm-hmm. Shayna versus Dewdrop. Well, they seem to have been trying to make Dewdrop into kind of like the same way Shayna Baszler is, like a dominant, you know, unstoppable, you know, wrecking machine. So hopefully when those two collide, it'll be a light, nice long match because, you know, they're both equally as hard to, like, you know, to beat, you know? So maybe, maybe. Yeah, you know, I, I, I give, I. At the very least, 10 minutes just for that match alone, at the very least. I, no commercial breaks. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hit my mic. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no com- scared me. No commercial breaks in between them. It's going to be 10 minutes. Nah, they're. <laughs> I, it just makes me mad. I can't even deal with it. Uh, my man of the week. I talked about mans. him. Mans. My mans <laughs> of the week. Yeah. Uh, I talked about him in the news and rumors. The new North yeah. American champion. Carmelo Hayes. Now listen. This man, first and foremost, damn. Oh, Oh my god, so pretty to look at. He's he's a very attractive man. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. But the fact that, yeah, they needed someone to put the title on. Escobar had it. I mean, Escobar and Carmelo can go now. Like, that's gonna be a good feud. But, like, also, it went, this is a, the second time this year that a title has went from, well, okay, I lied, third. Uh, that a title went from one African American to another. Swerve to Carmelo. Shout out. I fucking love that. And also, I'm excited to see what Carmelo is gonna do because they clearly have so much faith in this kid. Because they let him. Yeah. Oh, the breakout yeah. tournament. That's what it is. It took me 40 oh. minutes to fucking figure oh. that out. He won the breakout <laughs> tournament. <laughs> that that's the one. God damn it. You know what I wanted. You know what I meant. So, they clearly put trust in him. They had him win the breakout tournament. They put the title on him already. This is an exciting not a sh- I, hope it's a- I hope it's not a short reign. I don't think it will Cause, be. Because I'm going to say, who would take the title from him in this short amount of time? I mean, th- I mean, his first feud is basically lined up. You can have him go with Legado and Escobar. Yeah, that's true. Which, I'm not going to be mad at. Just saying. So, yeah. Carmelo Hayes. Shout out. Big shout out. 
Yeah, I was kind of expecting that, because especially because I know you watch NXT, so I was like, I, I'm like, oh, and I know you've talked about him a few times, so I'm like... I fucking love Carmelo Hayes. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna pick him, but then I was like, I know Katie's probably gonna do it, especially because if he just won the title. Uh-huh. So, my pick, honestly, probably a l- kind of random, but again, I'll explain. My pick for this week is none other than the returning Mr. Monday Night Rollins. My pick is Seth Rollins, and here's why. His feud with Edge has been absolutely incredible, and I love, I, I was very unsure about this heel turn, at first, especially with the whole drip shit, I was kind of like, eh, He's a drip like I was god, like, Savannah, accept it. Drip god. Yeah, no, I know, but like I was like, I was kind of iffy about it at first, but the more I watched and the more like I started catching up with it, I was like, oh my god, this shit is actually so good, and I actually really love this new version of Seth Rollins. You know, it's like a new. You know, I thought we were just when he turned heel again. I thought he was going to be like, it was going to be the same shit. So like, yeah. great. But no, it's something new. It's something different. It works. And I just, and, I, and I'm loving this feud with Edge. I really do. And the fact dude went to his fucking house and, he you know, helped fucking, He pulled an Edge, Cena, Orton, Triple H well, situation yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and that's, an, and that's another thing. Um, he, um, not only did he like help himself around and stuff, but he, his, him being on Twitter, like active on Twitter, has made things so much better because one of my favorite tweets ever now from Seth Rollins is he was like, he was talking about, he was like, um, Edge can, you know, break into someone's house and it's all, and it's like a classic moment to you, but I didn't, but Uncle Seth, he goes in for an apple. <laughs> And you all are losing your minds. He says, you all, you all are fucking, he called him, he called basically, he called his followers gaslighters. He's like, you guys are, and I was like, he's honestly right. I need to find the exact tweet because it was so funny. I know, I, I know exactly what tweet you're talking about too because I saw it. Yeah, like, this yeah, I thought, I thought it was so funny and it was so true though because I was like, you know, I mean, he's got a point and he's like, you call gaslighting? Yeah, for some, something like that. But all I know is like this grooming, it's all the same thing. Yeah, so he has been killing it in this heel role, but there's no title involved in this feud. Know. You know, I know there was, because of a title, him costing them the title is kind of what started the feud, but it's not for a title. Yet it's still so good. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna have a match not at Hell in a Cell, but in Hell in a Cell, right? Yes. In at Hell in a Cell at Crown Jewel. Good even though you could tell on Seth's face he got a lot of PTSD from the last time he had a Hell to Sell Magic on Jewel. We all remember that, but... We all remember that. But this is redemption time, Seth. And this also this opens the door time. for them to oh. get rid of that fucking pay-per-view and just have Hell in a Cell matches when they need it. Exactly. And, like, speaking of Seth, hold on. Yeah, I actually have him. I have him there down he here. Is. My God little Seth. Damn it. I got him for my graduation from one of my cousins, like my high school graduation, because I guess she just saw the WWE symbol and just thought, oh, she's like that. She got him. Hello? Do you hear you this too? Do you I hear the sirens at the back? <laughs> yeah. I live near a fire station, so that's why. And I Bro. live on a main road. Mark Katie, is your house on fire? Uh, like, to my knowledge, evacuate. it's not. So, I'm like, you can evacuate if you need to. Nah, I'll stay for the show. <laughs> but nice. Yeah, Seth, it is what it is. Seth, Seth's been killing it with this feud, and hopefully, it's redemption time for his Hell in a Cell match at Crown Jewel. It's redemption time, and I mean, even if he doesn't win, the match is gonna be a banger. They had a banger match. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Banger match on SmackDown. It's gonna be a banger. Ten out of ten. Yeah. And now they each have a win over each other. So this it's kinda like match. Ooh, exactly. Who's gonna exactly. who's gonna like a kinda like a winner takes all thing, the two out of three, you know? Yeah. I don't know if the Hell in a Cell match was actually a crown jewel. I just remember No, it was at Hel- no, it was at Hell in a Cell, I believe. The actual pay per view. Yes, because Crown Jewel was when the fiend got screwed the first time, I think. No, or was it the second time? 
first time. I don't know. All I know is that the last crown jewel is when the Fiend lost to Goldberg in a fucking squash match. That was the last crown jewel. At least that I remember, because I. I don't know. Crown jewel doesn't exist to me anymore. I don't fucking understand. I know, right? Um, <sighs> but yeah, those are our wrestlers of the week. Shout out, shout yes, out. Yes, they are. Um, I can't wait to like listen back and see how loud these fucking sirens actually are. It's okay. Um, I can't hear them that much. I don't know if you can like edit the audio. I know it's I, a lot. Of I editing. can, but like, it's for like Is the entire just... thing. Oh, so, okay. I mean, I could have like turned it down and then turned it back up, but I'm lazy. Yeah, no, but and it... I didn't know when the sirens were gonna come back. So no, I know, and it's adds character. It's fine. No podcast is perfect. Nobody's perfect in the words of Hannah Montana. Nobody's perfect. That is the yeah, second I time love... I've said that today. I love that song. <laughs> I can fucking hear my go. What is happening outside? <laughs> That's the main question here. Is the world ending? Uh, probably. Oh, wait, I Good night, them. everyone. I heard them. They went that way. Or, I'm sorry, like, that is someone one. dying or is someone's house on fire? Like, uh, it's probably both. Knowing Pittsburgh, probably shit. both. Um, <sighs> question of the week. Uh, the now, I'll I'll leave the choice to you. We can do the best finisher, the worst finisher, or both. I think we should do both. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh god, now I have to, like, think. I've had this question for an hour, and I still really... I still haven't thought of anything either. Uh, um, so we can do what we did, uh, for the... Excuse me, like, the chance one. We can kind of just have... Multiple, multiple ones? Yeah. Because, again, like... Oh. I'm gonna be called biased, but I'm just saying, like, I, don't, I won't say it's the best, okay? I guess just to keep some credibility, but... I do like the one-winged angel. That's all mm -hmm. I'll say. I won't say... I won't say it's the best, don't worry, but I'm just saying, I do like the move. I know something will make you mad if I say it. No, just say it, it's fine. Because <laughs> I kind of just want to see your reaction. No, uh, just say it. Buddy Matthews, or Buddy Murphy, if you will, has a better uh Oh, I've been told that Kenny. before. Oh, no, that was with Mandy. I, I, I can... said that last week. Yeah. But no, I think Buddy has a better knee strike than Kenny. By far. That's why that's why I want them to face. I want them to just knee each other until someone either passes out or I just dies. Saw, I, I just saw not actually done again because he just had a match. Uh, I don't remember against two. Buddy Matthews. Um, I thought he was gonna debut it all out. A lot of people but did. I hate living on the main road. <laughs> I haven't. I'll need. It's okay. I can't hear him that it's much. It's anno It's just annoying. This is constant. No, Either I'm podcasting or not. It's constant sirens. It's crazy. Yeah. Bam yeah, is right. The dogs, dogs are, are a lot. These dogs have been the I'm, third I'm, man I'm, of the show every week. I know. I, I almost want to go scream at the fucking neighbors, but they seem like the kind of ones who will pull a gun out on me, so I, I won't mean, do that. Are they... Are, are you, is your neighbor Arn Anderson? Probably. Maybe he'll pull out his Same clock. Crap. <laughs> um, okay, so best and worst finisher. It's hard to say because, like, it's like, especially because you use best, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, uh, best, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one out there. Uh, the Eclipse, by Ember Moon's. Finish. That one's a good one. That, I also that's like. That's fucking bad. Because uh, like, here's the thing: there's a difference between liking them and then them being the best. Because yeah. like, for example, I, I love Twisted Bliss. I think that's a cool move. But is it the best? Probably not. Like, I don't. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna like look at my wall. Um. I. I do Stone. also love, I, I also love um, the money clip. That's one of Okada's finishers. I think that's a cool move. Okay. Um, Kobayaki, which is Kota Bushi's. It's basically when he grabs their hands and just knees them right in the face. Oh, I've seen a clip of that. It's terrifying. Yeah, so that one's a cool move too. Um, well, would you say that this is more of a signature than a finisher? Because I don't, I don't know when was the last time the Bucks have won a move with this move. But um, Indie Taker, not Indie Taker. Um, what is it called? D a Melter Driver. Um, I would say it's more of a signature. I feel like it's more of a signature now. Yeah. Because they, yeah, because they, I don't know when was the last time they won a match with that one. But I think that's a cool move also. But because they have, because they use mainly the BTE trigger now. Um, Stunner, that's gotta be one of the most iconic wrestling oh, moves. Oh, for sure. Um, and the fact worst? that so many people can use it and they make it work. Also, yeah. Good. Um, 
I love how Kevin Owens utilizes it. I oh, yeah. I'll say that. Love for that. sure. Like, um, worst moves? Um, I think one of the worst has got to be Bailey to belly. Like, that's just a belly to belly. How the yeah. hell is that a finisher? I'm happy she doesn't really do it anymore. It's more so of like a signature of hers now instead of Yeah, no, but I hate I hated that that shit is what made people lose a match. I'm like that is like just a regular move. Even say the same thing about do... the big ending. Like you're you're doing more damage to yourself, I feel like than them cuz you're letting them fall onto you. That's, yeah. I don't know. I think I've had this conversation with somebody before. With the Aren't they the, the same move? The Bailey to belly and the belly to belly? I, it is the same move just cuz Bailey does it it's different. Um, I know Sweet Chin Music's another iconic move, but I know it's kind of been, like, um, watered down, because, ever- like, almost everyone, does everyone super- yeah, everyone does a super kick at this point, so. I, you know what? You know I what? Said I said Tombstone. Can... I said Tombstone. You know what is also a really good one? What? Panama Sunrise. Yes. That one is fucking cool. I love that move. Um, also, um... There's another one that I was thinking of. Um, There's it has to do so with... many. God, I'm trying to think There's of a lot worst. of... Worst? Well, I know Bailey to Belly has got to be yeah, one of Bailey the worst. Yeah, Bailey to Belly, big ending. Probably bad. is the worst, in my opinion. Um... No, okay. As a finish, Starship Pain. Yeah. John Morrison's... How the... F- how? How? I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I also like the Skull Crushing Finale. I think that's... That's a good one. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's one of the yeah. worst. Yeah, I'm just saying, saying I like one. it. Um, I think also, um, like, John Cena, I think for a bit, he had the Lightning Fist of Doom or whatever the Stop shit that it. was. <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, I, I remember that shit, and that was horrible. Uh, and, that was terrible. <laughs> This, coming from the Jarrah host, probably going to be kind of shocking, but the Judas effect, like, it's just... It's it's, the, it's an elbow. You the same thing about Eddie Kingston's. Like, the only time I think it's the ba- Judas it's effect a back is really... Fist. That's it. Yeah, except it's with Jarrah goes yeah, an Jarrah elbow. Yeah, Jarrah's an elbow. Kingston's like, a back I, fist. Why do... I mean, I get Jericho tries to do the whole reinventing thing where he tries to make himself different. You know, he has his whole, he has Y2J, he has the Paymaker, Demo God, he has the Champion. He, has, he tries to reinvent yeah. himself. He's always talked about it. But I don't think you need to reinvent your moves. The Codebreaker, another good move. I love the Codebreaker. Why doesn't he just use that? He still uses the walls of Jericho. So what's wrong with using the Codebreaker? Just fucking use it. Um... God, there's just so many people to, like, think through and try and catalog, like, what actually is a finish and what's not, or a finisher. Or, like, what's more of a signature. Yeah. Like, for example, the V-Trigger, would I would consider a signature. There's no way that's a finisher. Especially as more people have kicked out of it, I'm like, there's yeah, no way say it's a finisher. He's used it before to win matches, but now he can put people away with the one. Well, it's, yeah. it's, like, it's like the super kick. It's like... It's not really a finisher move, especially like with Sweet Shit Music, it seemed more believable to be a finisher when Shawn Michaels was like probably the only one using it. Yeah. Um, I'm, let me try to think of submission moves because those are pretty freaking cool. Uh, I like, um, I, I kind of like, um, Codus Islands, Carmella's. Codus, Codus Islands is a good one. Oh, you know which one's actually another bad one, I think? What? The Rack Attack. The Rack Attack 2.0, I think, was a lot better. I think that was definitely an improvement. Yeah. Remember, she would just put them up on her shoulders, and then she'd and that's fall why she on her... And fucking neck issues. And, well, I'm surprised she doesn't have knee issues. This girl, poor Nikki Bella's knees, she falls to her knees. I'm like, how does that hurt your opponent? They're just getting a little nudge of your shoulders. But you've got to have some bony-ass shoulders in order for them to really be hurt from, like, to consider it a Couldn't finisher. Be. Couldn't be. So... So yeah, that's the Bracket Tech 2.0. That one's a good one. That one was that definitely one was better. Yeah. A um, lot better. The Bella Buster is kind of also I, a lot of people a lot of women have used the if you like think yeah, about just, it. Kelly Kelly, Lana Summer, used Summer for, Ray. Lana, or, Lana used it for a bit. Summer No, I think I think Lana, yeah. Lana. Both Bellas at one point did. It used to be, I think, just Breeze because Nikki had the rack attack. Well, before Nikki had the rack attack. They both yeah. would use it when they were pulling like the twin magic and shit. Yeah, but then they got a boob job, and then now they 
he couldn't do well i guess i did think it was funny every time brie would like stuff her bra i will never forget at money in the bank when Paige like she pinned brie and she started ripping she the freaking like, tissue coming. like desperate she, she, she like, desperate yeah she pulled her hips yeah and, yeah smart, she like showed her tissue. i thought that was funny i was like i'm not the biggest fan of the bills but i thought that shit was hilarious and then like she, she freaking knocked the shit out of brie for that Boom! Like she got so mad. I'm trying to think of more submissions. The PTO is a good submission. Like how you don't get out of that shit. Yeah. Um. God, there, there's so there's so fucking so many. The ankle lock. I think it's outdated, honestly, because I feel like that shit hurts. <laughs> You ever had that? I'm, no, I think so too. But like, I think it's so easy to get out because you could just crawl to like pull an Eddie, take off the boot. Yeah, exactly. So you like, I feel like it's a little outdated. I'm not saying like it, I won't say it's the worst, but I yeah. don't think I think it's nowadays it's not the it's not the best one to use nowadays. I think back then, kind of it's kind of like Hulk Hogan's leg drop. Fuck. Everyone uses the leg drop now. That's now freaking useless. But back then, when Hulk Hogan was using it, it, it was like the best thing. <laughs> I know. Sorry, that was the only thing I could think of. But like, it was like it was a good like, it was a really cool move for. Um. Kind of like the frog splash. Also, like it was a good move. The frog splash Eddie was, was doing more it. so. It's not really a finish anymore. But it's because, like, again, finishers, I think, get outdated. Like, you know, the yeah. super kick, the leg drop, the ankle lock, um, the frog splash, which, again, like, I, like when Eddie was using it, like, that was probably, yeah, that like... Was when that was the peak of it being That was finished, the yeah. finisher. Yeah, I was like, the finisher. Now everyone does a frog splash, so it's kind of like, oh, you know, I, I, I of course they're going to kick out. Um, we'll do a few more, and then we'll end it. Yeah. Um, there, there was a... Oh, I have always been a huge fan of the lockjaw. I freaking love that Brit just not only constrains both your hands, so you can't reach your mouth, but she just shoves your hand, she shoves her hand in your mouth and freaking like tears into your jaw. Tears in your mandible, yeah. Shout out to yeah. her being a dentist because she knows that shit actually hurts. Yeah, and like, it's like, you know, I think the only counter could be if you bite down but you gotta have to like you gotta be stronger than her arm to try and like because she's uh, she's pulling down so you're gonna have to try and fight through that while your arms are being freaking stretched to their limits it's crazy uh like the fujiwara arm bar is also really good mm -hmm. especially, I also like especially the... when diana does it oh my god it's fucking bonkers and I also like the Karafuda Kara, Kara clutch did I say that right yeah. I probably said it wrong no, yeah Karafuda Mm -hmm. I like that one too. Um, I also I don't even know if there's even a name for the finisher that Shayna did on um, Sasha and Bailey at um, Clash of Champions when they won the titles. When she had I think one of them in the Carapuda Clutch, and then she had the other one like she yeah I don't I don't even know what the fuck you call that, but that was dope. That one is probably one of my favorites. That was so good. That's why she's the submission magi not magician. That's someone else. Um, sub submission specialist or something like that. <laughs> Who is the submission magician? There's someone There's else. Somebody. <laughs> That's Fuck. someone. I'm looking it up. I hate somebody, you. Gonna bother somebody. Somebody in the. Somebody in the submission. wrestling world. The submission. Ma. I was like, it's not Serena Deep. She's the woman of a thousand holds. I typed in submission magician, and Shayna Baszler was the first person that came up. All right, so it's her. <laughs> yeah, it's literally there. Only I only see Shayna Baszler. I could have sworn she they had called a, someone she that had a tea, uh, She had a t-shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> also, um, I can't believe I forgot this one. You know, he's one of my main six. But um, the Styles Clash, that's a good finisher. Except executing it is the scary part. Because if usually in wrestling moves, you got to tuck your chin. But if you tuck your chin in the Styles Clash, you're going to kill yourself. So, um, and then also the Calf Crusher. I think that one's a little... Of, like worn out now because it used when AJ first you know started using it especially in the WWE he would get people to tap out pretty much immediately when he got people in the cap pressure yeah. but now everyone's been especially after Brock was able to like counter it when he like wrapped his head around AJ and it went, pff, pff. like it's definitely like hasn't been served as a finisher unless he's going up against like some jobber or like someone who you know AJ's gonna beat yeah 
Well, Trouble in Paradise is also a good move. Sorry, I keep it's because there's you can go on forever about you know, this. That's what we that's what we have the issue with the chance too. Um, mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought up Cat Crusher. And this is a weird this is a weird segue, but I promise it makes sense. Okay. So, on Monday, the next Inside the Mind of with Justin from Get Your Podcast, which I don't even know if he's still in the chat, but that comes out, and one of the questions he asked me uh, is what finish and submission would I have if I was a wrestler, and I brought up the calf crusher, ironically enough. So, it's weird that you brought that up. So, on Monday, the new Inside the Mind of with Justin from Getcho. It's gonna be great. Uh, He makes me boss out laughing multiple times where I have to cover my mouth because I'm, like, too close to my mic and I don't want to bust the sound. That was a good conversation. Um, The episodes with Matt and Reek are up right now. So check those out before you check out Justin's. Oh, sorry, I saw I saw one of Matt's comments about the finishers. Oh, um, Hangman's Dead Eye. That one's a good. That is a good one. Yes, fucking good movie. It's better than the Buckshot. I'll say that. I think that should be his finisher, and the Buckshot should be his signature. Are you done? I'm done. Sorry, Savannah. <laughs> let me close the show, <laughs> and then we can keep talking about it. I promise. Um, okay. So those are out on the channel. So check those out. Um, I filmed the one with TC. That's going to be two hours long. That's going to be out in November, though. That's November 1st. That's when that one comes out, because they get released every two weeks. Um, one person has hopefully listened to it by now, um, because I gave them special privileges, because they asked. So we'll see if they actually listen to it or not. I'll get their opinion soon. Hopefully. Um, check out the episodes we've done in the past of She Leads. Yes. I have hopefully next week uh, In the Crowd will make its debut. The collab show yeah. that I have been talking about. Uh, if I if the guys are good, which I think most of them are, um, I'm going to have that up on the channel while you're on the channel in the description of this video uh, and the description of the audio you'll find, of course, like I have on the screen always, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK, which is 8255, and the Crisis Text Line, hello, well, text hello to 741741. Those, of course, are also in the description, as well as all of the information for Justin, aka Justin Heal Tactics, he is the guy who created all of the intro music for this show, Inside the Mind of, In the Crowd, which people will finally hear, and the yeah. New Japan Takeover, when people will hear in J- January. January, stuttered. for sure, because I'll be out of school. January, for sure, so people are going to love that one. I really can't wait for people to hear that one, because that one's really cool. Yeah, I freaking love it. I was so excited. That different when than I these it. ones. Yeah. So I'm very excited for people to hear that. So, follow him on Twitter, at Heal Tactics. Uh, you can go to Jalen on the Beat. All of his stuff is in the description. If you ever need his music abilities, because the guy is creative and talented as all hell, check him out. Hit him up. He's good people. We love Justin. Uh, that has been Sheely Showcase. This was, this was one hell of an episode. My god. Yeah, it was. Sure. It started off like super fast paced, and then and then we kept talking, and then we kept talking, and I was like, "Oh my god, is this gonna be our shortest episode ever?" Where are we at right now? <laughs> and we're at like uh, hour fourteen. Oh, that's not the longest. That's not too bad. <laughs> but of course, for Miss Fuck Miss Y Two Garcia, <laughs> Savannah or Savannah Nana, if you will. <laughs> I'm Katie Kinsey Bebe. This has been Cheesy Showcase, and we will see you guys next time. Bye bye.